Welcome to the Heist on the Row, an all-original Carnival Row RPG. I'm Travis Beecham, the creator of Carnival Row, and your game master for today's one-shot adventure. I'm here today with these four wonderful players who visited us on the set of Carnival Row in Prague, and now we're playing through a unique adventure with new characters from our world. So let's get started. Yeah! All right. <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, I guess we'll start off by uh, I'll ask you to help me introduce your characters here. Uh, Amy, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Amy Vorpal, and I'm playing Mabel Sully Pond, the fierce Furnace Battle Nanny. Mabel Sully Pond hails from the war. She is a veteran, so she is no stranger to fighting. Be it with her fists, with guns, any sign of weakness, she's going to go for it. And some may have called her a little rage hungry. She truly is the goat. Hi, my name is Eliza Pearl. I'm playing Carmeline Brightraven, a Mima fairy. A uh, Mima is a fairy priestess who's very well versed in fae lore and history. Carmeline is definitely a fae history buff, and she'll tell you all about it if you ask her. She also is really interested in studying human medicine because she likes to acquire knowledge and also use it to help and care for people. Carmeline also saw a lot of stuff go down in the war, so even though she's kind of warm and fuzzy and calm, she uh, has some secrets that she probably doesn't want anyone else on the road to know about her past. Hi, I'm Dan Casey, and I'm playing Officer Tiberius Bottom, a member of the constabulary of Carnival Row. I patrol these mean streets, protecting and serving mainly myself. I don't have a heart of gold so much as I have pockets of gold because Officer Bottom runs a protection racket. He will shake people down, he will run scams, he will destroy evidence, he will do whatever it takes to obtain that grain, get that bread, eat that yeast, whatever he will do, it serves his bottom line because Bottom is coming out on top. Hi, I'm Erica Ishii, and I'm playing Moonshadow Foxglove, a Black Raven fairy. The Black Ravens are the criminal underworld of the Berg. Moonshadow, true to her name, is sneaky, a bit of a thief and a rogue, a scoundrel, if you will. She works alone, or so she'd have you believe. She also loves knives. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's set the scene here, our story tonight finds us, your characters actually, in a room not unlike the room that we now find ourselves in, in the back of a prestigious supper club called the Janissary Club, not on the row. So I think you will all find that you are uh, a bit out of your element. And you've been summoned here, you've all, you've each received a note containing information that compels you to be here by some anonymous presence. For you, uh, Amy, slash Mabel, the note is uh, is is offering a way out of, to buy you out of your contract, which you desperately want. I desperately want, and also I'm so taken by this entire situation. I, I've never been able to interact with the teacups and the silverware myself, so um, I kind of, you know, Ratatating them and seeing what sounds they make on the teacups and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and Carmeline, in your case, the note has promised some knowledge of some dark deed that you did in your past back in Tirnanak that could maybe come out if you weren't to show up tonight. Because you know you haven't always been a Mima, and you've you've made some mistakes in the past. And whoever wrote this note seems to know what some of those mistakes are. There's only one thing I wouldn't want anyone else to know that I did. It must be that. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> All those murders. Right? It's like, let's wrap this up right now. Yeah. <laughs> secret, secret, secret. Keep your secrets. Officer Bottom, in your case, as you know, your character has not always played by the straight and narrow. And in your case, the author of this note seems to know that and, and is threatening to out some of your more questionable decisions to your bosses in the constabulary. We're not really inclined to be nice about that kind of thing. Oh God, this is gonna be bad for old bottom if I don't get to the bottom of this. Oh my God, what is happening? I hope it becomes like a running thing, like you just work bottom into like- Every yeah, sentence. Yeah, he's an <laughs> unintentional narcissist. And if it doesn't, it just is, it becomes yeah. punctuation. I stand up, bottom. It's yeah. time to get to the me of this. <laughs> <laughs> And Miss Moonshadow Foxglove, in your case, it has to do with your wife, who's stranded in the port of New Freehold 
between Tirnanak and the Berg, looking for a way to finally get to the Berg, but unable to cut through all the red tape blocking new immigrants from coming. And whoever wrote this note has promised that they have a way to expedite this process and get your wife here, finally, to the Berg. That's my chance to bring her home to me. Yes, that is why you've all found yourselves here, and you've maybe crossed paths before. You know, it's not a, it's a, it's a big city, but you've you've all lived here for a while, so it's entirely possible that you might know each other. But to find yourselves here, in the back room of this very prestigious supper club, summoned by an anonymous note, of course, you know, you're all wondering why I've gathered you here. Right now, coming into the room is this gentleman, this mysterious human gentleman in a dark suit who calls himself Mr. Rathstock, and he says to you, I've gathered you here today for this reason, because arriving on a ship this very night are antiquities from Tirnanak, fairish treasures from the homeland of the Fey, and they're headed for the Burgish Museum. I represent a collector of such antiquities who would rather a specific one fall into their own hands. What I want is a book. It's a very old book called The Palest Lantern, written thousands of years ago, a uh, thousand years before the first human words were ever put down. And it's written by this fairy shaman called Ferron the Black and contains within it a lot of interesting formulas and incantations, not the least of which being a formula for the creation of a beast called a dark asher. That is a very dangerous book. I hope whoever is asking for it knows what they're doing. It's just a tale for children. Dark yes, asher doesn't yes. exist. It exists and it is very dark. Dark magic. All right, so you want the book. What else do you need? Just the book. Just the book. Just so, the book. And so who home. are you? Are you going to address this? I wave the note at him. Is there a way that we can ensure that what has been promised to us will come to pass? There's no way. You just have to trust me. I am I had the power to summon you here today. You're standing in the Janissary Club, which is usually reserved for politicians and diplomats and men of power. And the fact that you're even allowed to be in this room at this moment should be proof enough. And can any of you really afford to not believe the notes that were sent to you? Well, I certainly can't afford to eat here. Mm. So I would like for it to remain private. It absolutely will, if you get the book. So, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Rafstock, was it? Uh, let's say that some of these antiquities uh, fall off the back of this boat, wagon, centaur, whatever. Is that okay? Do you just, need, you just need the book if some of these others disappear? My employer would like very much for there not to be more reason to, any more reason to look into this than there already is from the authority. But say if one or two were missing, uh, this... After all, I am the authority. It's like, who's going to look into it if not me? Then it becomes your problem. Oh yeah, story of my life. Will there be any additional security around this item? Is it sought after by more people than just you and your employer? Does anyone else know about it? Some know about it. That's why it's critical that we find it as soon as possible. And as far as the security around the item, Mabel, you're, uh, you're in a unique position to find out the security measures surrounding this item, owing to the fact that your own master, Dr. Bennington, is the professor who got them here to the Berg in the first place. Yes, um, that is, who, that, that, that is uh, who I work for, um, Nathaniel Bennington, and, uh, and his three small children who are just delightful. All right, <laughs> uh, give us more details before she pulls out photographs. All right, so the details are, we're in a position right now where these items are in customs. They've just been uh, floated off the ship and they're on their way to the museum. After tonight, they're going to be trucked to the museum, at which point it will be much harder to retrieve them. So you have very little time, and I would make use of it wisely. So I don't have time to finish my prom rib? No. <laughs> Shit. All right. It, it does seem like a wasted opportunity to be in this room and then denied all of this pleasantries, but if we must. I have another question. Besides these remaining private, what else will we get? Wow, I don't know. What else do you want? I, <laughs> I do want something. All right. I want to speak with Mr. Beddington about his importation of fairy relics and what he's doing with them. That is important history for our people, and I don't want them in the wrong hands. I think that is a wonderful inn. I mean, he's he's quite fascinated by the, the both of your type of folk and has spent many an evening with me even in his library just asking me questions about how I grew up. So arranging a meeting, I think, would be advantageous anyway. Don't you? Interesting, yes, very much. 
Well, you would be in a unique position to do that. Right, I... Then I should be asking you. Um, well, if, if we're all agreed that this is happening, then uh, <laughs> I feel all of a sudden not as useless as I did entering this room. Uh, listen, uh, Rafstock, uh, before we go, uh, where do we find you when this is all over? I'll find you. Oh, great. Oh, great. <laughs> So here's the situation. The customs house is in the area called the Docklands. It's a poor human neighborhood on the south side of the river near the ocean. And these are where the items are. They're kept in a labeled lot number uh, locker. How would you like to proceed? So the customs house in the Docklands, uh, I don't know about you, but <clears throat> this city is, uh, feels like it's on the verge of exploding thanks to a sudden influx of, uh, shall we say, some uh, more monstrous citizens and wing it. How dare you take it back No. Hi. Uh, it's all right. I will have you know. Cold. You're yeah. outnumbered. Now I know why she's never allowed to touch the teacups. I should just let her at you right now. Well, you might want to, but then I'll arrest a lot of you, have you locked up, then you'll never get your secrets. You can't do that if you're dead. <laughs> it's all right. We just wait until after we get the job done. What I'm saying, why I brought up these racial tensions in the city, not just because I'm a bad guy, I'm not, I'm doing my part. I'm saying this because if they see the lot of us skulking around, they might get suspicious, call in some of my colleagues. We don't want to get caught, so we have to be stealthy about this. Not a problem for me. What about that, uh, that master of yours? So uh, I, I do like the idea of going to my, my master because I... Going to him? You think you're gonna talk to him and he's gonna give us the... I don't know if he'll outright give us any information, but I, I do think no, the presence... No, that, that was sarcastic. I don't think he will. I think that we take what we want from him. Well, within reason, sure, but uh, but the the presence of you two, uh, if, if I present both of you as uh, willing to relinquish some fey... I, I, I don't know uh, anything about your culture, you could get into probably the actual room where he keeps his secrets. If we get into the room, I'll, get, I'll take us from there. I have seen some pretty uh, important documentation and tools, like um, perhaps keys or uh, uh, scholarly notes that he's taken. So I, I think I, 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 you seem to be of the underworld shadow type, you might be able to pick some off. <laughs> or, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a, I am an officer of the law, no, I've got we've a badge. We've all noticed, dearie. We're very I've proud of you, dearie. I could go we are and quite talk aware. to your master and tell him, oh, it's a matter of security for the museum. People are trying to steal this. Why but don't you let he, me go in and check it out? You, you let me. You do, you do realize. The then there'll be extra eyes on it. And yeah, he's... my eyes. It might not be necessary to go to the Bennington house because as you say, you as an officer of the law, have access to certain places, and, and really the customs house might be one of them. I mean, you know, sure, certain officers are maybe cleared for different things, but I mean, do, really, does the Port Authority know exactly who, you know, is allowed to come and go? Yeah, maybe Special Agent Bottom is on the case. We bluff our way in there, and then we just pick out what we need, and we're gone. But. I do think it might be worthwhile talking to Mr. Beddingfield because maybe he has we'll some insight as to what. Ton, yeah, whatever. Uh, Beddington. Whatever yourself. Yeah, I don't care about the kids or that guy. Like they're so cute. <laughs> okay, well, let's go talk to uh, the big daddy and uh, see what he has to say, so we get a sense of what we're looking for. I think that's pretty smart. Um, I'll lead the way. All right. So Beddington lives in a beautiful neighborhood called Finisterre Crossing. It's a wealthy human neighborhood on the north side of the river. And so you make your way there. It's, uh, it's, it's still early in the night, so people are still about, and you're trying to travel in a way that does not draw suspicion, you know, keeping a safe distance apart as you're making your way to the Beddington house. But you notice as you're approaching it, there's some commotion up ahead. There's a crowd gathered, and you can't really see what they're reacting to, but you see the light flickering on their faces and their eyes. And when you round the corner, you see the Beddington house totally up in flames. An inferno on fire. No, no, the children. Oh no, someone, we have to save them. They were
were here the last I saw them. I left them alone. I was never supposed to leave. The house is a hopeless case. The house is, 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 is completely burned. They might not be dead. Maybe they weren't in the house, but clearly I think you can assume that you're not the only ones looking for this book. Okay. That's a dead end then. Let, Are the children okay? Not yet. Yeah, Let's, the children. All right, I'm, I'm pulling out my badge and walking up to the crowd being like, Officer the Constabulary, who's in charge here? I'm gonna make myself scarce. All right. I'm gonna shadows. be right up beside Dan, uh, being of the Beddington house. Okay. I'll okay. be nearby both of them. Okay. Not, right, not right. right next to them, but nearby. Earshot. You go and you ask what's going on, and and there's another officer who recognizes you from the constabulary and says, "Oh, it's 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 insane. This 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 house it's just it's gone up like a matchbook. We're still trying to figure out what exactly happened. You know, I think somebody may have knocked an oil lamp over. Are the children okay? The Beddington children? Yes, the children are fine. The children are okay. Why are you they're rolling right, your eyes about it? That right is a perfectly there. valid question. <laughs> so if you look over there, there's the Beddington children. They're 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 wrapped in blankets. They're 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 obviously terrified, but uh, but they're alive. As is Mr. Beddington and his wife. Is there any uh I'm talking to the officer, is there any uh, suspicious activity around these parts? You heard anything? Well, you know, it's funny that you ask because there was, I, we did just talk to a witness. I'm sure, you know, with the, with this fire, you know, everybody, you know, tensions are high and, you know, it's hard to tell what's real and what's not real. Uh, but, but somebody was saying how just before the fire, they saw a fae flying around wearing all black. So obviously there's rumors of the Black Raven, but for one of them to fly all the way over here and, and set a house on fire, you know, that's, that doesn't seem does seem extreme even for them. Yeah. What is the state of the bedding, like Dr. Beddington and his wife? Terrified. I'm gonna approach uh, the, both of them. Okay. Uh, Dr. Beddington, is everything okay? I, you know I just went to the market to gather um, supplies for uh, tonight for the cook. Yeah, no, no, everything's terrible. The house is on fire. No, I, right? <laughs> but, I, but, but are you okay? <laughs> but clearly the children are protected and, and you and, and the missus seem to be fine. Oh yes, yes, we're fine, we're fine. We're fine right now, thank you for asking. Asking, um, where have you been? I, as I said, the cook had sent me off to gather supplies for tonight's dinner. She didn't have uh, this special onions, you know, for the peasant. Because, pheasant. Pheasant. Because little Millicent over here was saying you locked them in a closet <laughs> before you. <laughs> What's that? She exaggerates. You know, we all play games. It was an imaginary right. closet. We're playing uh, constabularies and fay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough. Well, I guess we'll be moving to the summer house to live from now on, at least until we can get all this mess sorted. Is there anything you need from me, perhaps, um, uh, to, to make sure of before I, I travel off with you? You know I have connections down in, in Carnival Row where I, I can just get um, fun little trinkets. <laughs> Perhaps you're driving at an idea that I'm not quite sure. Uh, I you're... just don't want to have to like. I don't want him to secure me in with the family right now. Oh, oh, I see. S okay, sorry. okay. Perhaps I could just make sure that all of your affairs are settled uh, down in the row, maybe at the bank and everything. That would be nice. And if you could just you could meet us up with us in the morning, uh, you know, and we'll 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 head off to the summer house then. Sounds perfect. Do I do I see this happening? Yes. Can I go over there? Yes. Uh, excuse me, uh, miss, I believe you're wanted as a person of interest in this case. You will come with me. We need to uh, ask you some more questions. Uh, but the trinkets... I knew it. I never trusted and, her. And uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, sir. No. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Yes, uh, Dr. Yes. Beddington, yeah. uh, pleasure is all mine. Officer Bott, I'm working this case. Now, do you have any idea... What is she under suspicion for, by the... Is it... Is it... Well, is she it has, child murder? Uh, I it, oh, Dr. Beddington! I'll have to add this to a case file. All right. I write it down in a little notebook. Okay. Um, no, I, uh, they're kind. Yeah, you can't, can't trust them. I don't know. I certainly don't. That's why I'm going to question her. Uh, but no, do you, have any, do you have any indication as to why someone, we're investigating all possibilities. I'm thinking arson because tensions are running high in the city, as you well know. Is there any reason that people might target you specifically? There's none that I can think of. I mean, aside from volumes of extraordinary power that I've stolen from somewhere across the ocean. But no, other than that, none that I can think of. Well, we prefer the term imported, sir. Oh, yes, yes, stolen. yes. Stolen. Yes, of course, imported. <laughs> yes, <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> yes, yes. Stolen from people, and uh, actual people. <clears throat> You know, I actually have a bit of an interest in this subject myself. I apologize, it's not maybe the time because you're apologies for your house, but you know, I've always heard tell of this uh, this one book I've always wanted to see at the Burgish Museum called the, uh, it's like the, the palest, 
lamp. Oh, the palest the, the, lantern. Oh, oh yes, the palest lantern. It's a very old text, one of the oldest fairish texts. Yes, you know what? I'm glad you brought it up because now, you know, I've just been thinking about this house here and how it's all on fire owing to Mabel and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Um, I that, don't know how I'm blamed for this. <laughs> um, that, that I've been, I've, you know, I'm so distracted by that, you know, but now that you mentioned, yes, the, the, the book is being, it's not on display at the Burgess Museum yet, but it's being held in customs, and I just, I need to get my affairs in order, and if you would do me the favor, officer, of just going there, perhaps, and just making sure that, um, that everything's okay on the docks. Oh, That'd absolutely. Be, be great, that's one less trip I have oh, to make. I'd love to check it out. Yeah. Do I need any sort of special, uh, is there any sort of special key or access code I need to get in you there? You know what, that's great. I'm glad you asked. I have a key in my pocket here. I'm just gonna give it to you. Oh, thank you. And and I'm gonna write you a note. If you could just take this note, I'm sure you know, um, the, uh, with, 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 with my, uh, with my trust, uh, I, I trust that you have the matter in hand. Absolutely, as an officer of the constabulary, you can believe in me. And uh, you can yes, totally yes. prove my uh, guilt or innocence. All right, we'll see what happens. Us All humans right. have to stick together, you know, that's... Absolutely, yes. absolutely. So I, I sidle over after, after this conversation and I take your hands on mine. Humans are... Rush. They are the. They're they are rubbish. the worst. Right. I know I, that I, you love those kids, and that's. I think they're stupid, and that any humans that aren't actively our allies are against us. But I'm so sorry, and we'll get back at them. I, well, I'm very impressed you're handling this so well, Moonshadow, because it does seem that that if if the rumors are correct, you will be moving against your own organization tonight. No, yeah, this one wasn't one of us. <laughs> All right. Couldn't. All right. Couldn't. Been. Right. Ah shit. <laughs> All right, so so from there, from uh, from the the mysteriously um, on fire Bennington house, you you make your way to the Docklands across the river uh, by the ocean and the Customs House. By now, uh, things are starting to die down a, a little bit. The night is 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 growing old, and people are starting to turn in and go home. And in a place like the Docklands, it's it's desolate. There's nothing there but uh, but some tall masted ships swaying in the tide and uh, and uh, the occasional watchman um, pacing about, whistling, twir twirling his keys. And you see just up ahead the distinctive silhouette of one of the oldest buildings in the Docklands, the, the old customs house, which is where you've been told the object of your interest lies. Does the key have a number on it? Like um, where you said the uh, the book itself was inside of a numbered locker, uh, would that match up with what was on oh, the Oh yes, key? so when I say lock, it does have a number on it, but when I say lo locker, I mean not like locker locker, I mean like locker the size of this, um, half of this room. Giant like where all, facility. yeah, yeah, you know, where like all the lot, you know, would be. So we know the, where yeah. we're going. Also along the way to the Berg, I'd like to uh, sort of make inquiries and light inquiries and see if in, indeed this was the work of the Black Ravens. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just because I'm because I'm part of the Black, Black Ravens, so I'm sure that the information highways, I'd have an advantage yeah, so you would know signals. Let's say, let's say you you know you know a special whistle. You can like fly your way up to the to a rooftop and, and do a cry or a whistle that will call any other black ravens who are near. Yeah. Well, yeah, or oh, you know so something subtle. else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bird to me. Damn birds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, something. Yeah, no, that like that. That's great. So, uh, but that would be a roll. That would be uh, if you, if you want to do it. And um, I would set uh, the difficulty of that at. Um, I would say you're in the Docklands, so you're kind of far from anyone. It's at least demanding. I would put that difficulty at three, so your target number is nine, unless you can bring it down. Um, if with my ties with the advantage with being part of the part of the Black Ravens. Okay. Is that okay. One. That one. What, okay, what skills do you have? I am streetwise. Okay, well then I would lower, I, then I would, if you have streetwise, I would lower that, your target number down two. Mm -hmm. So that's a, Six. that's a one, you just have to roll three, actually. Oh. Yeah. All right. Okay. First roll of the game. Yeah, hey. nine. Yeah. Right. Okay, so what happens is you'd go up and you do your signal. Ah, ah. Or something like that. And then a, a nearby black raven flies over. Um, somebody you know, it's Slingo, and um, oh Slingo, yeah, Slingo. We go way back. 
and uh, and, 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 and uh, what do you want? What do you what do you, what do you want, Moonshadow? It was a fire, the Beddington Estate. Was that us? Listen, you best not ask questions about that. Look, something's going on tonight. What's high up on? stuff. High up stuff. I can't really talk about it, but you know, the less you know about it, I think the better. Mm. Usually more information is better in our line of work. We've got somebody who's very interested in acquiring something. Is it a book? Listen. Just rumors on the street say it might be a book. Listen, I can't really, like, this is actually making me sort of uncomfortable to, to continue talking about this. This is on high. This is on Same. high. Yeah. Come on, it's me. It's a book. <laughs> All right, so if I were on my own, on another job, get one, then what? What the fuck, Moonshadow? <laughs> like, you can't, you can't go against the, you're, there's no on your own with the raven. Just right. walk, turn around, walk, walk the away. other way. Yeah, I'll walk yeah, away. yeah. That's not, 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 no money's yeah. worth that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just make myself scarce. Good luck tonight. All right, Moonshadow, where do you get off to? It's just my drinking chums. All I, right. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. I'm out. Slingo right. out. <laughs> <laughs> Slingo. Slingo out. Well, turns out the Black Ravens are after the book, so we're screwed. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, look at us. What a formidable force. So we still have some tactical advantages. We know where the book is. We have access to the book. Now we just need to move quickly because... I might suggest something. I actually come across as very mild and meek, but I'm a damned force to be reckoned with. I might put myself forward as a lost fawn uh, to attract some perhaps ne'er-do-wells uh, away from the customs house and then take them down. Create a distraction. Well, I'll sure. sneak around and get the lay of the land while you do that. All right, and I'll walk in through the front door with my badge and my letter of writ and the key. Well, uh, no. there's actually no ne'er-do-wells around, really. <laughs> there's just uh, security officers. Are, right. you looking to, uh, are you looking to distract them? Yes, I'd like to distract the security officers slash ne'er-do-wells. Yeah, show a little hoof. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think like that. I think I'll act like a victim, so I look like a, a, tar oh. a lost target. I could say that I found you uh, lost and you needed assistance. Yes, absolutely. All right, all right, good. What skills would you have in the in the course of getting their attention? Okay, I would uh, like to use persuasion, that I actually am completely out of my element. Okay, so I would put uh, the baseline uh, difficulty of this at three and bring it down then based on that to... I have one, yeah, so that'd be a two. Yeah, yeah, to two. You have to roll a six and let's see if anybody cares so that a fawn is hurting. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. I told you. What? I tried to warn you. Yeah. This is so thing. scary. Why is there fog everywhere? It's so <laughs> ominous. A 16, which, uh, yeah, I definitely beat that. <laughs> yeah, so everyone at the Berg rushes over. Oh. Um, <laughs> like, oh my god, a fod is hurt. I, 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 I nanny for three children. I, someone must help me. I must get back to my children. Well, you attract attention. There's some officers coming over. It's, it's not perhaps not quite the, the sympathetic attention that you would want um, because their first words are, hey, what are, you, what are you doing here? What's the big idea? Maybe you should just move along. And I look to my Mima friend. Yes, uh, I, I step in and would like to intervene and I'd like to use persuasion too. I have, uh, I, I'm trained in that. Taking that into account, um, I would put uh, this difficulty for Mima, let's say you have to roll a three, a difficulty of one. Okay. <laughs> I got a 10. All right, so they buy your story. <laughs> yes, um, so this phone, I, I, I was actually looking after her. She has some forgetfulness. Her memory is not well. No. Uh, and the poor thing, she cares so much about the children that she cares for. And I, we just want to find her back to her home if someone could help us. Well, where is her home? And while this conversation is happening, I might add that what good is a distraction if it's not yes. taken advantage what? of. While um, this is happening, uh, I think that Moonshadow and I are making our way towards um, the uh, customs house. Or right, I'm gonna take the front, you take the back. I go around the back. Yes, and together we will meet up inside. I think that's the best course, of, uh, best plan of approach. All right, let's see if their play works out for us. Yeah. I mean, you can come with me if you want. I figured pincer maneuver. 
always thinking about tactics, I am. Very smart officer. Yeah, that's what... why I always like working with you. Yes, that's why they're going to make me Special Agent Bottom one day. Then we'll see you as on top. Me. I, I like this uh, screwball yeah. comedy dynamic between uh, Constable Bottom and Moonshadow. <laughs> <laughs> um, this ain't our first thing. <laughs> Let's just say we get things done. <laughs> so you do. You take what is it? The front. Yes. And you take the back, and you and you enter the darkened customs house, and and you're making your way. You're looking at the key and the number on the key, and matching it with the cage numbers as you're going along the way. I'm keeping an eye out. Yeah. Others. While they're distracted, of course, you have the opening that lets you go in the front. And since you're doing the sneak around the back, let's have you roll for that and see how successful you are. I would put this difficulty at, I would say, it's the customs house, so it's demanding. You know what? I would put it at a four and say it's difficult and say your target number is 12. So what have you got? So I am trained in sneak. All my life here in the Berg, I've been right. sneaking around. It's dark and there's nothing but shadows. Okay. And I am nothing but shadows because I've got this cloaked hood. It wraps around me, it, it covers the shine of my wings, and it, there's a hood on it that's just, it's nothing but shadow. That sounds like a really badass hood. It's great. Slash cloak. So I would say you're trading, that's, uh, that's minus one. I will say that darkness is another minus one. And the cloak is very uh, badass sounding. So I would say that gets you down to you roll a three and you're successful. <laughs> Come on! 15! Oh, oh I yes. Was really That's hoping for silent. a one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bump into the door. You step oh, on yeah, a rubber yeah. chicken. <laughs> there's, yeah. like, there's a rake somewhere <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> so you go in the front, you go in the back. Let's say that, that you need to keep lookout and make sure the guards don't come back while he's looking for the key. Okay. Make um, it quick bottom. So this is like a super crowded, uh, like there's like trunks and stuff everywhere? It's like cages, like storage cages, like a long corridor of storage cages. Okay. And each one full of crates from whatever delivery. And they're all numbered and you're looking to match the number with the key. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm skilled in investigation as an officer of the law. So I'd like to see if I can uh, make a roll to speed up this process a little bit so I don't waste our time and risk someone else uh, coming to find us. All right, okay, all right. So um, speed it up how, like run or something? Well, no, I just <laughs> meant like put my keen powers of intellect to the test uh, uh. to see if like, because I'm not, I don't know how this numbering system works, if everything's in proper order, because I don't know, last time I was at public storage, it was just like Craigslist spilled. One thing that's going to be perhaps a very helpful hint to you um, as you're moving down this corridor is somewhere up ahead and maybe you're crossing your fingers that it's not going to be the locker that you're looking for, but somewhere up ahead, a cage door is hanging open and someone is rummaging around um, the locker and you're approaching very quietly. They still haven't noticed you. Yeah, I'm gonna try and stealth up to them mm -hmm. and pull my pistol to their head. Say, freeze. All right, okay, I like this, I like right, this, yeah, up. yeah. I don't know, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Let's cut back outside to you guys and, and see how all that's going. If the two the two security officers are still engaged with us, mm -hmm. um, has everyone else kind of dispersed now that it seems like you know the crazy fawn is being dealt with? It's relatively uncrowded right now being at this late hour and so that the two that came up to you, like the two that are engaged with you are the two that came up to you and there's no other ones in sight. Okay, okay. I want a gun because I'm actually really good with rifles. So I want to actually try to take one of their guns. I love, I love this. Yes. Power move. Yeah, yeah. Now oh, who's lost? <laughs> Outside the box. Yeah, yeah. I, I just know, I just can sense that like my teammates, my, uh, I don't know, we, we're in a dangerous, I know we're in a dangerous situation and, and I did fight in the war, so I'm trained with a rifle. So Don't uh, screw if, with Mabel. Like, there, yeah, was... There's a rifle yeah. I wanted. I said it's bedtime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the guards does have a rifle slung over his shoulder. Um, the other does not. How do you want to? I want to use etiquette, and I want to play the part of a, a docent, uh, mild 
uh, well, we'll see. This is what I do. I go, it's just so scary out here. Oh, if only a, a, a nice strong guard could could walk me back home. You know, I live with the Beddington, so it's uh, it would be quite nice. And oh, is that a gun? Could I hold it? And I'm, I've never held a gun before in my life. Um, no, actually, no. Right. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, officer. Um, um, as I said, her mind what is, is not this quite for, there. Is this for real? Like, I thought she was in trouble. Uh, now she's asking to hold my gun. Yes, no, like, I'm what? so sorry. I, uh, I pull her away. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I say, actually, um, we just need some assistance getting back to the house. Not the Beddingtons. <laughs> she said the wrong name because no. You know, what your kind, you know, your kind aren't even supposed to have guns. You know, I, you know, you could go to jail even for touching. Oh, of the course. Gun, even for thinking course. about the gun. Of course, like, officer. That's, Right, right. Yes. Well, silly me. <laughs> yes. What am I doing taking care of children? <laughs> Perhaps you could tell us about the neighborhood over there. And I want to point right, away okay. from the customs. All, all right, all right, all right. What's what, going, what's what's going on here? What's the history of this What's happening? I'm getting very suspicious. Can I do a persuasion starting... to see if that distracts them? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would put that at quite high as well. <laughs> Heroic, I would say. 24. <laughs> do you have anything to bring it down? I do. I have persuasion. Or I would like to change my tactic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, um, instead of basically asking for the history of this, I would like to tell some fey history, because I know a lot of fey history, oh. and just wrap them in with a, a really cool story about uh, fey lore, oh, okay. which is persuasion and fey lore. <laughs> okay, so that, that, would, that would bring it down to, what, six? So roll an 18, and, and he's going to want to hear about it. <laughs> Look at the one history buff working at the docks. Oh. It's an eight. Dang. Mm. Boy, we really could have used. Oh man! <laughs> if only they wanted to learn more sweet fairy trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. Oh, actually, I've been Tell meaning me to so study actually, this. Actually, um, when the fae first came to the burg. All right. Okay. This is one listen. Of the uh, that you, don't, you don't want to hear this story. It's a very no, interesting no, no. story. No, no, no. Have a nice day. Listen, I've got a customs house to protect. I'm gonna go back to that. And the other guy's like, yeah. And so they're both turning around and going back to the customs house. Better do something fast. All right. Meanwhile back in the customs house where it's very dark and the only light is coming from the lamplight on the water flickering through the floorboards and we have moon shadow sneaking around somewhere keeping an eye on things as constable bottom is very bravely attempting to sneak up and put his pistol to the back of someone's head hopefully this is a good idea let's see how you fare in that sneak because I, I think that's uh, I think that's going to need to be a roll. All right, <laughs> <laughs> free scumbag. Because <laughs> the goal here is you don't want to you don't want you don't want this person to to hear you coming. Correct. Yeah. Right. yeah so I, <laughs> contrary to what you might think, uh, in spite of all of my expert level tactics, I'm not trained in stealth, but I am trained in using firearms. So I'm not going to hopefully not accidentally <laughs> discharge my weapon prematurely. And I am also very skilled in intimidation. I will give you a stealth di discount. But, okay. Uh, but, but your proficiency, in, neither your proficiency in firearms nor your intimidation, I think, will affect how the floorboards creak. Rats, okay. Um, so what, uh, what, what number do I have to beat here? I will say you have to beat um, a nine. Okay, seems pretty demanding, but Officer Bottoms on the case. Okay, I rolled a seven. <laughs> As we say in the biz, that's a big yikes. <laughs> So as you're approaching, the aforementioned floorboards creak and you see in this figure ahead of you, this shadowy figure rummaging around in the locker, you see a flicker of wing as they turn and they're all black clothes. It's a black raven who turns and sees you. I quickly go, <laughs> Help. Help. Effort to Damn deceive. <laughs> In an effort to confuse him, and maybe you are just a black raven yeah. undercover. In all reality, would I know this? Would I have picked up on that earlier? Or am I? is that just me metagaming? Because I don't want to do something that my character wouldn't necessarily know here as fun as it is. You're actually saying you want to uh, uh, you want to make this secret Black Raven yeah, signal. Yeah, do you think do you think I would have noticed that earlier and put two and two together or am I just uh, um, Officer Dingus over here? I think, you know, you're welcome to try whatever you want to try, but I think he's not going to be fooled. I put the difficulty of that like obscenely high. Okay. It's a, it's impossible. It's but impossible. I will, but, yeah, if you're trying to summon her. Yeah, it's a dual purpose move. Yeah, if you're trying to fool him, that's that's crazy. But uh, Officer Bottom's playing four dimensional chess. All right, right okay, now. all right. Well, then you don't have to roll. Yeah, if you if you want to summon her like that, yeah, make your yeah. make your little noise there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> bottoms up. Do we hear that outside? Well, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, because you're in your own little zone, and I think several yards away. Bottom side. Um, so I, yeah, uh, it's, it's what I say when he gets, he's getting himself in trouble. Yeah. I like how you have your own little, yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so I, I silently and swiftly move towards where yes, they are. Yes, because as, as, as you look and see, you see, you see him with his gun raised and a black raven coming at him, oh. unintimidated by his gun. Oh, and what are you gonna do? Gun. So I, I keep keep making sure sure my hood is still up. I quick draw a knife and I lob it oh, at, you know, you're take the- Oh, you knife throwing. Yeah, okay, take okay, the that's wing a good out. move. That's a, take the wing out is yeah, what you're- Yeah, because you said they're, they're flying. Oh, oh, no, 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 he's, going... he's, he's walking. Oh, he's walking well, then I'll, I'll take, a, take a leg, take him out of the knees. Okay, okay, so you're you're not aiming to kill him? No. All right, no. okay. All right, so that's, I would say, demanding, but you have knife throwing skills, yes. right? Yes, so I'm a two with knife. Let's say you have to roll a three uh, to hit your mark there. All right, um, so, so a nine or a three? A three, you three? have to awesome. roll a three, yeah. Damn. Yeah, I'm very good with knives. Oh, 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 just oh, made it! Oh, oh, Yo! Magic. Yes, yes. Brutal. Your knife catches him in the calf. He goes down on one knee. He's temporarily incapacitated, only for a moment. I could remind you, you still have a gun pointed at him. Yeah, I'm walking. I'm walking up to him with the gun trained on him, saying like, "All right, spill it, picks. What are you doing here?" <laughs> You're, it's you're, a tactic. All right, all right, we're gonna come back to that. But what have you two decided to do about these guards who who have now um, turned away from you and are headed back to the customs house? I'm gonna start chanting and, and pretending I'm possessed because that'll freak them out. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the rifle and I can no longer take my eyes off it. It must be mine. I'm, I'm going to charge okay, and take well, him down to take the rifle out of his stupid hands. Okay, that's an interesting two-part plan. We maybe don't need the first part. <laughs> ah, I can distract. Well, they've already got their backs towards you. So oh, you would yeah, only- Oh yeah, I was trying to keep them from going back to the custom house. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Um, well, how do you want to do it? Let's see how we can collaborate on this. Okay. Uh, my instinct is to take one of them out by surprise, like by charging, taking his gun and shooting him. <laughs> Look, I've got some PTSD from the war and I've seen my rage. Uh, so that's what I would like let's to do. Let's do the charge, okay. Okay, let's do the I, charge. I, I, well, if she's taking one of them out, I feel like I should take the other out because we don't want to have- You should definitely be yeah. ready to, yes. Well, I, yes. yeah, I'll, I'll be charging the other one then. Great. You, by physical force. Yeah, I have melee, I have okay. unarmed all right, attack. All right, all right, all right, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough, okay. So You're going is, for the guard with the rifle, the big yep, the big one with the rifle. That's right. I have an unarmed attack with my horns that is a minus two. And I would argue that because his uh, back is turned to me, I, I, I might be able to uh, have some advantage there as well. Okay, that makes sense. I would say, I want you to land at a six, because I think there are levels of four based on what you've said. So a so six, a six or higher. Okay. Six or better is gonna like yield a, a, a productive charge. Perfect. All right, I've had about enough of this. I hate playing crazy people. <laughs> All right, here we go. That is a 12! <laughs> oh. So I charge right at him, my hoof stamping in the murk and the mire of these Docklands, and I come up from behind them, um, kind of ram my head right into their back, forcing them to arch their back uh, and then just smack down while I pick up their rifle. And and I do pick it up by the, I don't know, the chuk chuk part, so that it goes <laughs> chuk chuk, and I'm ready. <laughs> okay? It's a shotgun. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Suddenly it's a shotgun, but uh, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Maybe it's a rifle with a chick chick part. Um. <laughs> I don't, I, uh, <laughs> oh, I think I broke your like, gun. <laughs> Like Terminator 2 all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so you do that, and you have his gun, and he's on the ground. He's not dead, but he's knocked down. You know, you gave him a good hit. You have his gun, and you, it's pointed at him. Meanwhile, the other guy, who's, you know, all of this is happening in the, in a few, within a few seconds, he's shocked. He hasn't had time to react yet. He maybe doesn't realize that um, the Mima, of all people, is now running towards him. Do you have anything that you want to attack him with, or is this just a body blow? I have a knife as well. Okay. So I don't want to stab him. I would like to knock into him and press up with the knife. Oh, uh, like holding it. You're, you're looking to restrain him yeah. from action. Yeah, uh, his difficulty, I think, is probably a 
three. Do you have any sneak skills? I have melee, hiding, an unarmed attack, and two, minus two for knife. So that's like four steps right there. I would give you knife if you were attacking him with a knife, but just restraining with a knife. I would give you hiding and unarmed attack. Okay. So that gets you from three to what? To one difficulty. All right, so roll a three or better and oh. yeah, yeah. Sounds easy, right? <laughs> we'll see. Ah, it's a five. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. 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 Nice. You come up behind him, wrap the knife around his throat. He's not gonna make any move towards uh, your friend there who's got her, her brand new rifle trained on the guy. What do you wanna do with these guys? Um, for now, like, because we don't hear any commotion yet, right? It's it's more, I guess, to make them look as if everything's normal. By now, you will have heard a commotion because I think this has taken long enough that that you have heard the knife. Well, not heard the knife, but heard whatever commotion shouting has arisen from her throwing the knife. I want to force Black force Raven. us to move into the shadows yeah. so that we're not we're not like surrounded by uh, wandering eyes. It, yes, it yeah. would be good to lock them up somewhere, somewhere in a closet or. Maybe you have some <laughs> some experience with that. It's like a whole Locking runner here. Closets. That's yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> the villain of season two. A flaming closet. Play. But as it turns out, I am I am familiar, and it seems like there might be some closets inside the the customs room that might fit these two. That's perfect. Let's go. Let's. Let's bring them Okay, inside. you realize you have a rifle pointed at him and a knife to one of their throats. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to kill them yet, unless right. unless 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 you want us to, Travis. <laughs> no, I'm just you know, it's like I'm a I'm a bloodthirsty god. I demand sacrifice. Um, no. Uh. <laughs> no funny business. We're taking you into the customs house and locking you up. And you're moving them into the customs house to lock them up. And meanwhile, you're in the customs house. This black raven is on one leg, but he's still sort of. He's hopping, and I should remind you that at this point he's turned around and he's seen you. I've got my hood up. I got my hood up. He knows there's a black raven somewhere. I would say there's the burden on you is very high to not let this guy out of here. How do you want to handle him? I think it's your move. All right, I've got my gun against his temple, saying, all right, you little black raven shit. Where's the book? The book is in my pocket. You, uh, human. Oh, There's good. not a lot of racial insults. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It usually works Very, like yeah, that yeah. when the power structures yeah, are not yeah, your yeah, favor, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> it's really fucked up when you think about it. Anyway, I rifle through his pockets. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But at around this time, as you're rifling through his pockets, you don't see he's reaching for, look, Black Ravens really like knives. Yeah. Um, he's, he's reaching for a knife that's tucked into his boot. Do I see it? You see it, he doesn't see it. I draw a knife and I stab him in the kidneys. Oh, <laughs> let's see, wow. let's see what that does. So, he likes did her own co-worker. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't know I'm here, <laughs> or oh, I won't have any co-workers. He's not gonna know I'll much. I'll be dead. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna try to stab him in the kidneys? Let's say. He's restrained. Because normally I would put him high. I would put him. Um, I would put him at formidable. Let's say you have knife skills, right? Mm -hmm. so that's two. Then do you have anything else? Um, melee. I would say this um, stabbing him in the kidneys. Let's put it at um, a nine. You have to roll a nine or better. <gasps> oh, no! It's a one. Natural one. No. It's a one. So, so let's say you, you, you make a move to stab in the kidneys. You're not fast enough. He gets his knife out and, ah! and, he, and he gets bottom in the bottom. Oh! Yeah, butt oh, stab. No. My namesake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real pain in the ass, ain't it, bottom? Oh, <laughs> you laugh yeah. now, you suck at stabbing. Oh. Yeah, so now now what's what's happened is is as, as you're rushing to bottom's aid, this Faye, his wings are out and he's off the ground. He's not outside, but he, you know, remember his legs aren't quite working. He's flying down the aisle. He's gonna make his way out. I'm gonna try and shoot him. You're gonna try to shoot him? Right in the head. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you got? Let's see, uh, what did I say, he's formidable? For a, a injury to your namesake bottom, I would um, I would dock two points of damage for that, unless you've got some sort of protection. Well, thankfully, as a member of the constabulary, I wear our fashionable police coats, which provide me with two armors, so uh, I am thankfully unscathed. But although has. I do not appreciate what he just tried to do. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I'm definitely taken off guard. <laughs> okay, okay. So he's on his way out. You're raising your gun to hit him. Yeah. He's booking it, and he's at formidable. What, what do you got that's gonna bring this uh, uh, 21 
uh, shot in the head down. Okay, so I have uh, two rank in pistols. Uh, so I'm like a pistol expert. Uh, they call me, um, you know, they call me the Widowmaker down at the Constabulary. Okay, okay, that gets you to 15. I'm pretty intimidating, so I'm gonna say like, eight lead picks, and then uh, hopefully strike fear into his uh, heart. I don't know if that's gonna play with what you. What the hell? <laughs> 12, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. All right, come on. Wait, Good you can, you can, with effort. Yeah, you can expend effort too. Expend oh. effort. Do you want yeah. to put any effort into this? Yeah, I definitely want to expend effort to burst his head like an overripe melon. Well. Okay, so, um, all right, target number nine. All right. Yes. 19! Oh. 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 All right, so that would be uh, four damage, but since it's a 19, that's plus three damage or a minor effect. After being sort of surprised by what was happening, I cock the hammer on my gun, raise it at him and say, eat lead picks and then I fire it, and the bullet travels through his back of his skull, out through his eye, and his head bursts like a Jackson Pollock painting all over the other lockers there. Can it's a I suggest mess. also at that moment that the Mima and I are coming through the door to lock up the guards and we get a little splatter? Yeah, they, oh. they, they open the door. You see, you see quite a different set of tactics <laughs> being used inside the custom house than you were using outside. Oh, we didn't know. Were we firing? Did we say we were firing? That was okay. We didn't say we were going to be killing people. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's a power bomb! Yeah! yeah. Nailed so he's, it! He's dropped, he's dropped down. You go in there. Well, you've got to secure these 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 two guards that you have. What are you going to do with them? Easy, we put them in the locker where the, the book like, was. I'm gonna, where the I'm book gonna, was I'm with the go, open locker. I'm going to go real quick and um, rifle through and grab something small, maybe. All right, and then they they usher they usher the guard the guards that they've captured inside. Bottom, you might want to turn up your collar so they don't recognize yeah, you. Yeah, I'm uh, a I'm a <laughs> I'm playing <laughs> I'm playing it cool. Turned up my collar, got my hand like this, like oh I don't know you guys. <laughs> um, and I also want to uh, rifle through the uh, dead uh, Black Raven to see if I can find that book. Let's see where that book is because he said he said it was on his person, but you know he might have been lying to get you distracted, so before you lock your guys up, both of you, uh, let's use investigation to see if you can find the book. You, you focus on the locker. Okay. The book's somewhere. So I would say this is standard difficulty. Okay. Um, so we're gonna beat a six. You gotta beat a six. Find it. And I'll just do a straight roll That's why I never made detective. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Afraid? I see a three, nothing. three, so it's definitely not in the I locker. See nothing. An eight. All right, so you find the book on his person. Can I try to see if there's anything else, though? Just you like, can. Just I don't care what it is. Just okay. I'll just take a package and. Okay. You want to grab something? Yeah. Just okay. Grab something at random. Can okay. I also get in there and look for other Fey lore that I would like to protect? Yes. All of you can go in the locker <laughs> and do a little just shopping. Loot. Um. Loot. I, I'm not interested. I just want to put people in You've got big your closets. Yeah. You've got your rifle. I, I'm yeah, wiping yeah, yeah. the book off on his cloak, getting a little yeah. bit of the gore off of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that you guys are so interested in Fey history, but as, of course, that you've all started perusing this locker and, and, and Mabel is no doubt admiring her new rifle, um, these two guards are are, are gone. Whoa! <laughs> they left. Oh, they've, they've run. They've they've they, <laughs> they are off to get help. Backup oh. is coming. Um, oh! Ah, they slipped through our fingers. Backup oh. is coming, but but uh, on on the plus side, um, you found the book. So what do you want to do? You want to you want to wait for them to come back no, and try your odds I'm against? Gonna, uh, I'm just gonna grab uh, anything I see, just a, a pa random package, and, and tuck it away. I'm stuffing the book into my uh, into my jacket pocket and like just walking out the front door with purpose. All right, all right. So all of you, all, all of you are making your way out of the customs house. I'm going around the back. Yes, I'm you're sneaking. Al you're already hearing the alarm bells, uh, the ringing somewhere outside calling for backup. Let's truck it. I don't know why we're just walking. I think yeah. we should run. Run. Well, before you do, you're standing there, you know, on the on the foggy docks, um, and you're about to part ways when you see a figure approaching. It's a dark figure, and he's approaching very calmly, and it's Rathstock. And true to his word, he's found you, just when you found the book. He's like, wait, 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 before you go anywhere, before you do anything, I'm gonna need that book. <sighs> 
Rapstock, you get us out of here, you get your book. If we go down with this ship, ain't nobody getting nothing. I'll throw this in the water. Can I do an insight to see if I think he's gonna try to kill us or do harm to us after he gets the book? Also gonna do a sense of motivation. I don't trust him. Yeah. Okay, okay, you can. So, what's the target? The target is high. The target's gonna be formidable because Rathstock is good at concealing his... Uh... Right. Okay. I have, a, I have a sense of motivation. So that goes down one. Okay. I have two steps in insight. Okay, so let's say 15. All right. Okay. Let's see what's in his head. 20! Oh! 20! 20! 20! 20! Mine was 20. not worth it. 20! 20, oh so... So you do not get a good feeling about this guy, and you've started, and you're looking around in the fog, and you see that he's not alone, that there are other people, like, behind crates, behind Ooh. ships, people leveling the weapons at you. There's something about this that you don't like, and you are surrounded. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> and Rathstock has a smile on his face and says to you, you know, no, I think you will give me that book. So uh, what do you do? Well, I, I nudge these two uh, and Don't make eyes, <laughs> eyes, eyes. They're like, I, didn't, I sure don't know who these see, people are. <laughs> to oh, make yes. sure they see who is around us. Well, I, um, I uh, hike up my skirt where I've been hiding my rifle and I <laughs> pull it. <laughs> Do you know how rifles work? <laughs> She's very tall. Yeah. She's 12 I'm feet bone. tall. I'm very, I'm very furry down very there. Very straight legs. I'm super furry. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I, I pull it out of my fur, which I, makes a lot of sense, and I say, oh, will we? And I blast a shot right in Rothstock's face. <laughs> Look, I you're trust my meme, afraid. Okay, She's okay, okay. Me out yeah, of... You're aiming for his face. I mean, fright. Um, Look. he's 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 ah! formidable. Firearms is minus one, and rifle is minus two. All right, so uh, roll a twelve. All right, I believe in you. A oh, one! A one! A one! Oh. one. <laughs> a one. Oh, a one. You pull the trigger, the rifle is not loaded. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> nothing no. happens. Oh, um, oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> All right. See, uh, seeing that, I, mean. I want to roll out of the way and scramble for cover. <laughs> and now everyone's claws are out, including Rathstock, who's now pulling a gun on you. All right, so let's roll for initiative and see what happens next. Rathstock's number is seven, is a difficulty seven. So that's a- Oh, oops. Um, I got a natural 20. Yes. Ooh! He goes first. Damn, this um, Rathstock. I got a seven. Yeah, so he's pulled the gun on you, um, and he fires. He fires at, of course, Mabel, who has pulled the trigger at him. Hits her in the leg. Mabel that's my rifle leg! The, yes, her <laughs> rifle leg. She's going She's going down, and you hear the clomp clomp of boots coming as, as the men who have been watching this and armed are on their way. So yeah, who's next? Do I take damage for that? You do take damage for that. We're gonna take two. Awesome. Minus one armor, so that's only one. Yeah. Just trying to kneecap you, though. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm next. Okay. I am going to try and shoot the gun out of Rathbone's hand. Okay, uh, I like this. This is interesting. Rathstock, excuse me, not <laughs> yeah. Rathbone. Rathstock. I'm gonna shoot his Rathbone, which is what he holds his gun with. Just to see if I'm the uh, hot shit gunslinger that I fancy myself to be. Probably not. You've done um, well so far. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Your target is uh, 21, which is not possible. So what do you want to do to bring that down? I'm skilled in pistols and firearms. It takes me down to 15. But also, I think that I want to expend some effort. This is an extraordinary circumstance. And okay. I think that I can become the super cop that I've always wanted to be okay. in this moment. Okay. This is where my life turns around. All right, all right. All right, hopefully I don't enable this. 14, yes! yes! Right. Oh my god. Okay, so that was yes. We needed that. Stressful. <laughs> you pull the trigger and the bullet hits the gun, not his head, but it knocks the gun out of his hand. Rathstock is now disarmed. You still have these other men coming at you through the fog. And it's, whose turn now? Oh, I think that's me. I rolled the 12. My uh, jaw's just agape because I can't believe that actually worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see this ping of sparks and the, and, the, and the gun just flying out of his hand. Even Rathstock looks a little surprised. I would like to run at Rathstock and tackle him. Okay. As we know, Rathstock is uh, difficulty seven. So what do you want to do to bring that down to something you can? I have unarmed for minus one, and okay. then I have melee for minus one. Okay. And he also 
might not be expecting this because he just uh, he absolutely expects this. Okay. <laughs> okay. This, is, this is a fifth. Uh, I see yeah, that yeah, he's yeah. well versed in the martial arts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's ready for whatever ready comes next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Fifteen. Yes. No. Twelve. Ah! Oh, psych out. <laughs> so in running, you trip and you fall. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. All right. So seeing. Raf Stock and all my friends failing miserably and seeing all the men around us. I grabbed the book. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I grabbed the book from bottom and I fly out over the water and I say, all right, let them go. Everyone goes their separate ways. I throw the book to you. If you shoot at me, I drop it in the water. Well done. That's good. That's well done. Okay, Raf Stock's listening to you now. All right. Throw me the book. Let him go. All right, boys. Let him out of here. I start booking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clippity no. clop on the, like, on the hooves. Just running in shape. Run. <laughs> now give me the book. And I throw it like oh. over it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to where his men can get it, but they'll all have to go find it. They'll all have to scramble for it. There's no way they can come after us. All right, which they do, because the book is what they truly want. And so from then- I'm out. You're out, all right. You narrowly got out of this caper alive. And I'm sure we made zero enemies in the process. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna be holding. I'm gonna be holding your finger to the page to write me an, an excuse uh, for for my Beddington family. <laughs> Officer, yeah. she executed a pigs in cold blood at the no! stockhouse. No, no, no. <laughs> and the officer. <laughs> so thankfully, you guys have made it to safety. The book that you've been trying so hard to get has fallen into Rathstock's hands, and whoever his employer was, I remind you it contains it within it some very dangerous incantations as you've heard including formulas on the creation of a dark asher which is a very dangerous creature to see what his or his employer's interest was in the book and to see if you guys are still around check out the show and if you like what you saw, uh, please uh, go to Nerdist or Geek and Sundry to download a free copy of the RPG to play for yourselves. And remember to watch Carnival Row Season 1 now on Amazon Prime. I think you'll enjoy it. Be sure to tune in to Carnival Row, the new hit TV show from Legendary Television and Amazon Prime Video, available to stream now.